So it's true. I am related to my ex-wife's ex-husband. For those who are new to my channel, you might not know this, so I'm gonna give you a little recap. I was married with four stepchildren. I was with my ex-wife for five years. As a matter of fact, to be more specific, I was her fourth marriage. She was my first, might be my last, <laughs> ain't gonna lie to you. And the ex-husband that I'm speaking about, that I am related to, is her first marriage. Her kid's father. And I don't want y'all thinking crazy now, my ex-wife did not have four baby daddies. She only had one. So he is the one I'm speaking about. And if you haven't seen my 23andMe video, you can go ahead and click onto that. See exactly what my DNA is made of and how I got to see someone on my family tree. It was funny to see this person on my family tree because he is related to my ex-wife's ex-husband. He is actually the brother, which means I'm related to both of them obviously. It's just funny to see it on my 23andMe, but I already knew about this. But I'm here on this video to explain about it some more. Because y'all don't know. I've never come to YouTube about it. Before I start my story, I want to give a disclaimer. The information that I'm about to speak on is public knowledge. It is on public records. You can actually look it up, Google it, newspapers, articles. It's all out there. So I'm not telling a family secret. I was hesitant at first to talk about it because it is my stepkid's father and it is my ex-wife's ex-husband and it is their story. But at the same time, he is my extended family member. So it is my family history. So I must speak on it, whether you like it or not. But I will not give any names. I'm gonna actually make up names uh, to fill in the gaps, to fill in the story just so you won't get confused. Well, let's start from the beginning. This family member of mine, who I am going to call Raul, was arrested and charged for murder and mob action, along with four other people. Now let's talk about the history of this case. In 1997, Raul and his four friends were out at a bar and they got into a verbal altercation with a cook in the kitchen. I don't know exactly what transpired, but they ran after this cook and on his way out of the bar, the cook grabbed a knife for his protection. He ran out to the parking lot and this group of people along with Raul ran after him these people beat and stabbed this man to death. They arrest all five men and they were all tried for the same thing, murder and mob action. Turns out uh, Raul, who is the family member of mine, was out on bond and was later acquitted of the charges. Now the other four were still being tried for murder and mob action. Since Raul was the only person who was gonna be used as a witness on the stand and was the only one who gave a handwritten statement against the four people, and of course him being acquitted, it just didn't look right. By the way, I forgot to mention, um, all five people, including Raul, were members of Latin Kings. Now in the streets, this is considered snitching. For him to be the only one acquitted, there's gonna be some repercussions. They just knew that one of their own, Raul, was gonna be a witness and that he gave a handwritten statement. By the way, he was the only one that gave, that gave a handwritten statement and he was the only Latin King member that was a witness. So before they called him to the stand, he moved out to a different state with his girlfriend and their child. They only had one kid at the time. For safety reasons, he was a target from his own gang. One year later, in 1998, there was a double murder. We're gonna call him Marcos and we're gonna call the other victim Carlos. So this is the double murder case in 1998. So let's talk about that story next. So while those four gang members from the case in 1997 were incarcerated and the trial hasn't began yet, Raul is in another state continuing to live his life. So while these four people are sitting in jail, the Latin Kings were out looking for Raul. They wanted to take care of him before he is able to go to court for that 1997 case and testify against the members. You know, 
get rid of the witness type of thing. So because they couldn't find him, the next people that they went to were Marcos and Carlos. And they both are also Latin kings. So these are all from the same gang. They brought Marcos and Carlos to an apartment with the pretense of making a drug deal. When in fact, they were actually there to get information out of Marcos because turns out Marcos is related to Raul. Marcos is Raul's cousin. Marcos was the only person that knew where Raul was and he was not giving up that information. He was not gonna let his cousin go down knowing what these kings are capable of doing. So he took the beating both Marcos and Carlos. They beat them and still Marcos was not giving the information up. They beat the fuck out of them, eventually killing both of them, duct taped them and wrapped them up in plastic. They later stole a minivan, put the bodies in the van, unwrapped the plastic, poured gasoline on them and set them on fire in the van. This was the double murder in 1998. They never found Raul, but they pretty much fucked up Raul's life because he now knew that his cousin died saving him. So either way, everything was a lose-lose situation. Shortly after, the four gang members from the 1997 murder case were finally convicted and sentenced. Three of them were convicted of murder and mob action, and the fourth one was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. And when it came to the double murder of 1998, they caught all the people involved and they convicted and sentenced them as well. Crazy history. So let's fast forward to 2014. Little old me <laughs> comes into the picture. Okay, I am an SPD tech in Illinois. I worked at a hospital. I was in a relationship at the time. When I'm in a relationship, I'm committed, okay? I am very considerate of my partner's feelings. And I'm just extra, naturally extra. I don't go out of my way to be extra. I literally will not flirt with anybody when I'm with somebody. If I find someone attractive, I get shy about it. I look away. I don't give them attention. Even if they talk to me, I get nervous. And this is what happened at work. So my ex-wife, was a cook in the cafeteria of the hospital. I thought she was straight. I would go at the grill where she worked and I always ordered my food. She cooked the food for me. I didn't pay her no mind. Sometimes I eat at the cafeteria. Sometimes I eat at the employee lounge. But today I decided to eat at the cafeteria. So I sit my happy ass down, start to eat all my food and shit. And here comes my ex-wife, the cook. She's done with her shift and she comes over and sits directly across from me. Just sits down. Doesn't even ask if, if it's okay to sit. No, she just sits. I look up, confused, because <laughs> we never talked. We never had a conversation. And she just starts to talk. Let me explain something about my ex-wife. She's an extrovert. She socializes, she loves people, she loves being around people. So for her, it was easy to approach me. She sat down across from me and she just sparked the conversation. I can't tell you exactly in detail how the conversation started, but I can tell you that this was one of the first topics that came up because I was a little bit shocked on how the universe works, how they can bring people together that somehow are connected to each other. So let me explain. Conversation went towards a funeral service. She said something in the lines of, yeah, there was a funeral. My ex-husband's cousin was killed with his friend. And as she went on about the funeral, she didn't go, she didn't talk about the cases. She didn't talk about detailed information. She was just talking about the funeral. I don't know how the conversation went there, but it went there and it went there fast. So I'm like, I'm putting two and two together. Cause listen, there's not that many double murders. Okay, especially a funeral service where they're both together. So I started listening and I'm like, um, that funeral service? I was there. And she looked at me like, what do you mean you were there? I'm like, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I must have been maybe 12 to 14 years old. I was a youngin, I was obviously a, a kid. At that time, not knowing, my ex-wife is seven years older than me. So she's already married and has a child with her husband. I'm a little kid, okay? I was at this funeral service. Now, I remember being there and how 
dark and sad it was. The mothers of these victims are just crying and crying. And I remember seeing these closed caskets side by side. It was just so sad to see. I didn't know the situation though. Like I was too young to really ask questions. I knew like in general that they were killed. I knew that I was related to one of them. So I told her, yes, I was there. I was at that funeral. I'm related to one of them. She looked at me and she's like, who are you related to? Which one? And I said, to Marcos. I know that Marcos is my second cousin. I didn't know him, know him, like on a personal level, obviously I was a kid. At the time they were like 18 to 22, around that age. But my older sisters knew them a little bit more. And she's like, wow, uh, my ex-husband is related to Marcos. They're cousins. Interesting. So if Raul and Marcos are first cousins and Marcos is my second cousin, I'm wondering if I'm also related to Raul. Doesn't mean that I am because that can just be a cousin from his other parents' side. But we knew there's relations here and in some way, some sort. So it was like, woo, shocking. Later on, I ended up breaking up with my partner at the time and me and my ex-wife ended up dating and I brought her over to my family's house. And that's when the conversation came up with my parents. And of course, your parents know everything, you know what I'm saying? Your parents know who we're related to. And that's when they told me that Raul is my cousin. <laughs> Raul is my second cousin as well. So, I found out that I am related to my ex-wife's first husband. Yeah, I am. Which means their children, all four of them, and all five grandchildren, they are on my bloodline. My stepkids, are related to me. So I, I don't know exactly how that works. You guys might wanna help me with this, leave a comment below. So if Raul is my second cousin, then my stepchildren are something of me. I, I don't know if it's third cousins, third nieces and nephews. I don't fucking, I don't fucking know. But we're related, okay? My stepkids and I have the same bloodline. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting and we knew this early on. Um, but it's not something that I'm gonna just throw out there on YouTube. But um, because I did the 23andMe and I saw that Raul's brother was on my family tree because he also did the 23andMe kit, it just reminded me of the whole situation. So I was like, ah, fuck yeah, I'm not with my ex-wife anymore. I'm gonna just talk on it. <laughs> so that's the story of how I'm related to my ex-wife's ex-husband. It's pretty interesting. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all better make sure that you come to my next story time. All right, y'all, I'm gonna see you. Peace.